Hey, good morning. Welcome back. It's your early morning Sunday show. Go out, grab yourself that cup of coffee. Because, you know, I'm going to talk a little long and you're going to get sleepy. If you have some no-dos, feel free to do that. If it's early in the morning or if it's late at night. But have, happy to have you. Opening picture. You saw I uh, had, had a, a VC meetup. was down in Dallas and had the absolute pleasure to... Uh, Go out and have dinner and do some record shopping with Chris from First Pressing Goodness. Andre Linda Lake came all the way in from Georgia. And also Terry, rock and roll derelict. Uh, Terry made uh, uh, videos about a year ago and hasn't been working on the concept. Terry, damn it, just do it. Just do it. You have a lot of stuff. You know, Terry's showing me these albums like, I have no idea. I have no idea what you have here. And, and so... Terry, you just got to show them, man. Let, let us see what you got there. But it was just an absolutely fantastic day. Uh, the next day, actually, I uh, didn't fly out of Dallas till late, so I could go around with um, uh, Chris from First Pressing Goodness and he would have breakfast with Andre and super, super happy. So cheers to you guys. This, this, was, this, this was a really, really good time. This week I'm heading out to my happy place, going to Puerto Rico to work a couple days and then take some vacation time in Puerto Rico. I got myself all set up to enjoy some beach time next weekend. There will be a video though, don't you worry, there will be a Sunday morning video. Nice and early as always. But we got a lot to go through today. So we shall begin because I don't... I'm afraid it could go long. Let me start with, I got, this, I was so excited about this. I, wow, I got in. It's a fella cootie box set. Look at that. Uh, was it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven albums. This is number four. Erica Badu has been putting these together. And the first three box sets sold out and they go for some bucks. Number four is not selling out as much. Maybe it doesn't have quite all the super cool stuff. I don't know, but I loved it. Uh, so think about it. This is fourth box set, seven albums, four times seven, that's 28 albums. You're gonna find out that's nothing. They, they, they could be making fella cootie box sets forever. Uh, it came with a nice little book. And basically each Thing describes each album. It goes through the lyrics of the album, puts it in English so you know what he's saying, though eventually he was singing English. It has a nifty little poster, basic black power, because he was very, very political. And then we get into the albums here. And I will show you those. First one, this came out in 1976. This album is called Yellow Fever. Uh, Yellow, uh, this, this was produced during what he they called his Purple Period. From 1975 to 1977, he put out 24 albums in Nigeria. 24 albums. Now, there might have been more compilations going out there, but that's what he put out. This one here, Yellow Fever, it's, it's a protest uh, to African women because they like to use this cream that would lighten up their skin and make it just, you know, so their skin would be more white. And he says, why are you doing this? You're African, you're black, quit doing that. Also, it would, it would screw it up and make it all splotchy and stuff. So that is what this album's about. Then on the second side, there's a song called Napoi. And it's about sex. It's about super graphic, sitting there watching people have sex, and it's a play-by-play -play discussion. Uh, I, it, it's it's uh, not not in English, which uh, I mean we're 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 talking triple X, okay? That's what kind of thing it is. Uh, then he came out with this one here. This is from 1977. No agreement. Look at that. There he is kind of shackled up. Uh, no agreement, 77. His compound was burned in 77. 
and, and uh, but even that year he put out 10 albums. Some of it was the material he already had in the can that wasn't at his compound that they could produce. Uh, no agreement basically is just telling his government, um, hey, I, I, I will never accommodate a corrupt and a corrupt government and a corrupt uh, military and so this was his way of just kind of saying screw you guys uh, what's interesting is Lester Bowie from the Art Ensemble of Chicago plays trumpet on this album how about let's go into another album from 1977 and where'd it go man I'm trying to do this in order here And I don't know what happened. Oh, yeah, it's, this is it. All right. Um, it's uh, Johnny Just Drop. And Johnny Just Drop, uh, this one also came out in 1977. Uh, and what Johnny Just Drop, what that means, it's basically slang, is Africans would go to Europe, and they would go to America, and they would come back, and they would be pretentious, and they would be all about, well, you know what? Now look at us. We're a lot better because we have seen the world. And he's just saying, no, nah, that's not the case. And the chorus would go, he would, uh, during the chorus, he, he would say, I be African man. And then the women in the background would go, original, I be African man, original. And so that was his whole thing is, you know what? You, you know, if you stay African, you are a better person. Interesting album. Then we have here VIP. This was a live album that was done in 1978. I'm trying to think. Berlin. Yeah, it's just it, it was done in Berlin. So uh, this is really one of the last albums that he did uh, with his first band, uh, the Africa 70. Uh, they, they began to quit for two reasons. First off, he'd gotten so revolutionary, they were sick and tired of getting beat up, you know, just arrested. The other thing is, he didn't like to pay them, well, kind of like George Clinton from Parliament. And, and, and so they, they just began leaving. And so uh, this was at the, you know, the end of the 70s, and he began, uh, his backing band turned into Egypt 80 as he brought in new uh um, musicians to play so uh, live album but one of his last with that Egypt 70 uh, we have 1980 here we got Coffin head of state this to some extent is a tribute his mother passed away his mother was in that compound in 1977 was tossed out a window was traumatized had real issues ever since that happened well she finally died in 19. Eighty. This is his response to that. His um, and and also kind of tribute to his mother. His mother worked uh, for Nigerian independence. She was one of the people on the ground fighting for that and also for women's rights in Nigeria. The other thing is he rails against Christianity and Islam and just about how Christianity and Islam comes in and just screws up African culture. He just says that's not right. We don't need other people's religion. We have our own. So again, very political. Uh, in 1985, he put out this one, Army Arrangement. And uh, this is, oh, what's this about? All right, this kind of came out. Uh, he was having a tough time in 85. He got arrested because he transferred 1,500 pounds out of the country, and that was against the law. You couldn't take money out of the country, so he was arrested, uh, and... Um, for smuggling that out. He has on here, he has Bernie Worrell plays, Sly Dunbar plays the drums. Uh, there was a different mix that was done. This is the original mix that brings out more of the raw music of Bella Kuti. And the last one came out in 1992, and this is the Underground System. Uh, Underground System, this is his last album, his last album of original new material that he did uh, from 1992. Uh, during the 80s, his production went way down, and basically just because he kept getting arrested, beaten, jailed. I, it, it just weighed on him, and you know, it just, <laughs> he just couldn't produce nearly as much. Uh, 
it's again the underground system is about how the military and the government conspire against you he never let up now i mean he gets radical he talks about idi amin how great idi amin was and as we know idi amin did a lot of um cleansing of ethnic cleansing but he was but to a lot of people in africa idi amin was great it depends on what ethnicity you were, right? <laughs> How good Idi Amin was. Uh, but that was his last stuff. So, super happy to get that box set. Very excited. Uh, you know, it's again, his works have been coming out. They've been calling him again and again. And very, very nice. So, great stuff. So, that's how we got going. In the background, we're playing Fella Cootie because you can't. You can't drop in any of his music, which makes it kind of sad. All right, I got wine bender. What's being wine bender? I, uh, everyone knows pretty much. Eric Winebender has sent out a ton of VCLT. I mean, it's been basically he had a truck pull up to his house. He loaded it with boxes and sent it out to everybody. And he was nice enough to send me stuff. Uh, if you haven't looked at Eric Winebender's channel, he's very eclectic. Uh, it's just casual conversation. Let's just sit down. Let's just talk. And that's what it is. It's just casual. He a lot of times brings in friends. He has Veronica. Veronica, you're super cool. And, and they just sit around and they chat about music and about anything else that may come into his brain. And there's a lot of stuff that comes into his brain. Uh, he sent me... Uh, for those of you who received ECLT from me, you know I love the doodle. Eric's good at it. I'm not. But Eric's really good at it. That is pretty dang awesome. And it's autographed, and the boy has fine penmanship. Uh, he sent me a nice little card, and I really do appreciate that. I would just say his penmanship is incredibly good. It's just amazing, and... Uh, it's it's funky because this episode's about Funky Steve. Funky Steve is back, uh, but this is just really really nice. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, it's just about he goes. I, I hope all is well in your world. It's been some time since I spoke of sending you some BT Express, but finding shouted out isn't an easy task in my region. I think the two Barbara Joyce LPs are the top picks in the catalog. Shout being the best of the rest. Stay beautiful, brother. So he sent me that and sent me a very funky sticker. Uh, so incredibly generous, Eric. Uh, I was super really surprised I didn't know this was coming I don't he got my address from somebody else and so I just didn't know that this was um, happening and he really tapes boxes good so what he sent me is I had talked about on one of his um, episodes he had showed um, BT Express I don't have any BT Express but growing up in the 70s do it do it till you're satisfied whatever it is do it uh, was a huge hit and I saw that, wow, I forgot about that. So uh, the BT Express are from Brooklyn. Uh, they formed in 73, broke up in 81. It's disco funk. So it's not hardcore parliament funk, adelic funk. This is disco funk. This is made to get on the dance floor. And when these guys started, they called themselves first King Davis and the House Rockers. Then it was the Brooklyn Trucking Express. That doesn't sound very exciting. It's the Brooklyn Trucking Express. No, nah, hard to say. BT Express, that's easy. So this was the first album, Do It Till You're Satisfied. And when you look at it, let's think about funk. What do you need to do? You need to have, um, oh, what should you have? Uh, you should have a hypnotic bass line. Check it off. You should have hand claps that come on the alternative beat. It's on there. Check it off. You should have super cool congas. Check and double check on that. Uh, this was just irresistible disco jam, man. This thing, uh, it came out, I believe, in 73, and it began to burn up the dance floors. Uh, Barbara Lomas was uh, the woman. She was a singer, and she sang in the first few of these, and she just had a 
amazing voice. So super excited to have that because it's a 70s hit. And I love the stuff from the 70s because that's my childhood. Uh, number two was Nonstop from BT Express. And this is really considered their classic. Uh, you know, this, this one had the hits and there was a couple hits on there. Uh, this this one really, really brings out the funk. Uh, again, very much disco funk uh, and, and, not, and not the hardcore stuff. Uh, there's one ballad. They do one ballad from uh, Backrack and David, of all people, close to you. This band is not a ballad band, and they shouldn't be doing that stuff. Uh, it is about dancing. Extremely strong album. Really good stuff. Uh, BT Express nonstop, and to Eric's point, probably the best of the rest was Shout shouted out the BT Express. Uh, this one came out in 1978. It was their fifth album. Uh, very similar this one to Brass Construction. The group Brass Construction, you can see them behind me. Uh, they modeled themselves after BT Express. Well, their producer came over to produce these guys because they were beginning to struggle and Brass Construction was taking off. So they had a single called Shout that did very well, went up the charts, so they produced a album around it. The album didn't do as good as the single. There were three BT Express. I didn't have any in my collection, so extremely delighted. So thank you so much, Eric. That was very kind, very generous. And if you haven't ever checked out his channel, just check it out. It's just like sitting down in, in a living room. We're going to sit down with Eric. Eric's going to talk to us about music. And we're just going to sit there and chat about randomness. And that's what he says. It's going to be about randomness. He does a really good job with it. So we're on funk, right? We're talking funk. We got the funk. 1975, uh, Parliament's Chocolate City. Uh, this is a repress, but I did not have this on vinyl. It's on Casablanca. Uh, this this is an early Parliament album. I believe it's their second one. It's kind of the um, R and B side of P funk, shall we say? They hadn't got really hardcore, but it has uh, Bootsy Collins, Bernie Worrell, Eddie Hazel. Uh, it's just it really is funk infused R R and B. It's radical, it's political in some parts. For instance, Chocolate City this is done in 75. It's just about cities that are turning to be all African America, you know, Atlanta, Washington, D.C. And, you know, they talk about, you know, who's going to take over the White House. Uh, and uh, like Eddie Murphy's going to take over the uh, president. I, I don't remember who's who. But it, it's a very fun album, but it's also a little bit different. James Griffith recently showed it on his channel, and I commented, and says, I have a little harder time time with side two because to me parliament is just this hard charging kind of funny funk and and this has some more rhythm and blues for instance on the second side it starts with let me be and and it's done by bernie worrell i mean bernie worrell's on keys he's a classically trained pianist and he's throwing bach chords within that song uh there is the song um I misjudged you, and and it is um, oh, what should we say? It it it's kind of oh, I'm trying to think how I would describe it. It's it's like the Parliaments, the group before, a little more doo woppy, a little more harmony going on. It's very heavy soul. It's not so much funk, but then it ends with Bigfoot. And Bigfoot has a heavy, heavy emphasis on the one. And in funk, the the one is what funk is about. James Brown got it going on, a lot of it because of Bootsy Collins. And that is you put the hard beat. The hard beat comes on the one, the very first beat. Boom, t -t -t -t, boom, t -t -t. And, and that becomes really what funk was built about. And so it had that. Uh, so I'm delighted to have this. And at James, I'm working on the side too, trying to appreciate it more, understanding that it is not as hard funk as the rest of them. Um, so far, I cannot do a single needle drop because everything, including everything in BT Express, is blocked. So the way it goes, folks, right? In the background today, uh, you can hear uh, Fela Kuti. 
I don't know, maybe you can't hear it. Maybe you need a hearing aid. Uh, but that's what's playing in the background because all of his music, you believe he did 24 albums in two years and all of it's blocked? I mean, how, how do you even, how much time does that take to do, right? All right, here's something really exciting. Jimmy Cat, the Jimmy Castor Band. This came out, at, uh, Jimmy Castor, born in 1940, died in 2012. Uh, novelty Disco Funk. This is a Record Store Day edition from uh, 2018. Only 2,000 were made. Guess what? I got a sealed copy. So does it really, you know, some of these special edition, we're only making this many. Does it matter? No, if no one buys it, no one cares. Uh, regretfully, no one bought this, but this is excellent. Uh, this one came out in, God bless it, 72 or 70, 1972. It had two hits on here. The first one is It's Just Begun, which is the title of it hardcore funk and then there's troglodyte and those growing up in the early 70s you remember the novelty hit troglodyte suck it to me 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 i suck it to you baby uh bertha butt the beginning of bertha butt which later uh became uh, another hit song on the next album bertha butt and the butt sisters oh my god 70s classic novelty just a really fun group. You know, he began as a doo-wop group called the Teenagers in the 50s. And then he kept going. And in the 70s, he found his groove with the funk. Uh, and it, his stuff's been sampled by DJs. An incredible amount of his music has been sampled. Uh, there is, so he does some doo-wop in here. There's some ballads in here. There's some orchestral type of beginning and empty uh, ending, uh, but the, the, like the title song, it's just begun. I mean, that is a salsa infused funk with just fuzz guitar going on. That thing is a powerhouse. Slaps you in the face and says, this is what it's about. Then of course comes Troglodyte. Very excited to get this album. I got it at my local guy at Radio Wasteland. Jim, thank you. By the way, Jim, I'm sorry I'm wearing competition. Electric Kish is a great radio, uh, great radio. It's a great record store in a neighboring town called Bay City. I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, Trouble Man, pick this up. This is a Marvin Gaye soundtrack. This came out in 1972. Typical black exploitation soundtrack, but a very good one up there with uh, Isaac Hayes and Shaft and Curtis Mayfield and Superfly. Uh, basically, 72, Marvin Gaye was at was peaking, and this album shows it. Uh, he jumps more to jazz. You can see he has this desire to do more of jazz. And it's in here. A lot of it's instrumental, but he does have some very nice and smooth uh, vocals. Just an important thing to have with Marvin Gaye because it is a very good, strong album. Trouble Man became a hit. All right, Electric Kish, I was talked about that in Bay City. He got in a reggae collection, and uh, I picked up a couple, and I'm going back for some more. The first one is called London Rock, and the name of the person is U Brown. And that's off the Third World label. Hugh Brown's really name is Hufford Brown, uh, born in 56, still around in Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, basically, he made music from uh, 1976 to 1984. Uh, this album is from 1977 called London Rock, and it is his third album. Uh, his influences were U Roy and I Roy, and he is U Brown. I guess uh, B Roy and Z Roy didn't mean anything to him. I just thought that was interesting. It is. Uh, this is. It's. It's. I really like this. When I listen to this, I'm going to drop a. Um, uh, London Burning, a, a sample. It sounds like the exact kind of reggae the Clash would listen to. In fact, if you listen to the Clash really harder reggae type songs, you're going to say, gosh darn, that's you Brown going on in there. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's more, it's just not basic reggae beat, but there's more added in. There's some fuzz guitar in there. Really, really kind of neat thing. I mean, my first thought was The Clash. So happy to pick that up. Coming 
And the other one I picked up was called K Pow. Yeah, K Pow. And the name of the album is called Revolution, and it's on the Trojan record label. K Pow was around from 69 to 79. And then in 2016, they got together again. Uh, it was by uh, Mickey Zapow. Did I say K Pow? Zapow. God, what's wrong with me? Zapow. I can't read my thing. Uh, but the guy, his name was uh, Michael Williams, I believe, but he changed his name to Mickey Zapow. Uh, they got the name from, believe it or not, a comic book. I know, big shocker, huh? Comic book, Zapow. Pretty cool. Uh, they put out like, uh, how many albums? Five albums. The first was Introducing Zapow. Then it had um, Zapow Now. Then came the third one, Revolution. Not, as, not, not so Zapowy. The fourth one was called Zapow, and then the fifth, Zapow again. They like the word Zapow. Uh, it is, um, it's kind of, it, it, it's, it's nice. It's, it's a little quieter reggae. Uh, there's a song I'm going to play called Funky Skank. Uh, and, and there's some neat fuzz guitar going on in, within Funky Skank. Uh, uh, there is just, some really good vocals that go on within this thing. I thought they really sang good on here. Uh, some ballads. A little syrupy orchestrated on the ballads. I didn't much care for that. Almost felt like a very easy listening when I heard that. But uh, otherwise, you know, some really, really nice reggae. So, sapow. All right, there we go. Went long again. Really apologize. Wanted to get through all that. Really appreciate it. Eric Weinbender, thank you so much for that. Great meetup in Dallas. Just a super time. Appreciate everyone dropping on by once again. I hope you have a wonderful week. Enjoy yourself. Spring's coming. What more can we ask for, right? Everyone have a great week. Bye.